All right, guys, class is in session. Yes, we are covering classes in this video. It does not mean classrooms, although we're going to talk a little bit about classrooms. Uh, in the last two videos, we learned about structs and enums, and those are both value types. Now we're going to shift over to learning about classes. So while those were value types, classes are reference types. And as I explained a couple of videos back when we learned about object-oriented programming, these fundamentally work differently behind the scenes. And because of that, the way that we use them is slightly different. And in reality, it's actually a little bit easier to use a class than a struct. Now, that doesn't mean that we should use a class over a struct all the time. Most of the time, we would probably prefer a struct to a class, but there are absolutely cases where we need to use a class. So when we actually create a class, we call it an instance. And that instance of the class is pointing to the object in memory. And because of that, the way that we update a class is slightly different. We don't actually mutate it like we did with the struct. We actually just update the object in memory. So in this video, we're gonna look at a quick example of how we can actually create a class and how we can update it. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about when we should use a struct versus a class. hopefully easier video for you guys. In this one, we're going to cover classes. And I did these structs, enums, classes in a specific order on purpose. Structs are probably the most confusing, but also the most powerful. And we should get really comfortable in using structs. And when we, so in the object oriented programming video, I did two, three videos back. I explained the difference between the stack and the heap. And class is one of the things that is in the heap. And the reason we use a class is because when we go to edit it, we reference the pointer, the object in memory, and then we change the object in memory. We do not take the object, copy and mutate it and create a new object. So the structs again are better for passing around your app, but the classes are better for when you have an instance in your app, and then you want to do things maybe inside of it and have it kind of hanging out in your app. So classes are a little bit slower. They require more memory allocation. So we want to use stacks over classes, but there are many, many use cases where we might want to use a class. And in this video, I'm just going to show you the basics of how to use a class. So let's right click and create a new playground page. And we're going to call this class classes. And let's write some code. The same thing as we did in structs. Structs are fast. They're stored in the stack. They are value types and they're copied and mutated. I'm just going to copy that and we're going to do the, the class version. We're going to say classes are slow. Now the term slow is not actually true. They are very, very fast as well. They're not as fast as structs, but comparing structs and classes, classes are slower. And again, that is because the classes are stored in the heap. And that heap is then shared across all of the threads in our program. And so objects in the heap are reference types. And so reference types, reference types actually point to an object in memory and update the object in memory. So we don't create a new object. We point to the same one in memory and then we change it as is. And because we're changing the same object, we don't have to deal with all of that, the weird mutations that we were doing on the structs. So if you followed my struct video, we added like mutating code. That is specific for structs. Classes don't have mutations because instead of mutating the class, we actually just go into the actual object and change it as is. So we're going to pretend like we have a class. I'm going to call this maybe my screen view model. And I'll open the brackets. <clears throat> now, view model is a term you probably have not seen before. When you start building applications, you usually use something called an app architecture. And that's basically a structure on how you're going to organize all of the code in your app. And view model comes from one of those structures, which is called MVVM, model view view model. And in that, when you're doing it for SwiftUI, your view model is a class. Now there are very technical 
reasons for that. <clears throat> but I want to just create a, what we're going to call a view model, a very simple version of it. And so without actually knowing what MVVM is right now, let's just pretend like this class is going to have all of the, the data that is needed for some screen. So imagine we have another, we're going to have like a struct that's like my screen, right? And then that screen would have a reference to the view model. And so all the data from my screen would come from my view model. All right. So we're going to pretend like we have this view model and maybe on the screen there is a title. So maybe we have a title of type string. And maybe there's also a variable called show button of type. Maybe there's something that's happening on the app. And some of the time we want to show the button. Some of the time we want to hide the button. Okay. Now let's first create this class. And if you remember back in the object oriented programming, I talked about creating an object is to initialize the object. And we use an init in the struct video, we created a struct and then we had this implicit init. And so that implicit init meant before we even typed out an init, we were able to create that. If you remember, if I don't have an init here, I can still create a quiz with an init because it has an implicit init, which basically means the compiler understands what the default init would look like. Because we are now working in classes, there is no implicit init. And so that's why we're getting this warning here that class has no initializers. So in order to fix this, we need to actually write out our init ourselves. And I can do that by creating an init. Now I'll open and close the parentheses and open the brackets. And this init is just like the init that we had in our structs. So the same ways we did all of this and we set up all of these, any of these inits, we could do the same exact thing in this class. So I'm just going to do a basic init. So we'll have a title of type string and we'll have a show button of type. And we'll set self.title equal to title, self.show button equal to show button. And again, self is referring to the class itself, this instance of this class. So self.title refers to this one. And then this title refers to the one that we are passing in. Self.show button is this, and then show button is this. Now that we have our initializer, that error should go away. I'll point out here that another way to get rid of that error would be if we gave these default values. If I gave this a default value and I gave this a default value, we wouldn't actually need an initializer because there's nothing to initialize. These already have initial value. But for these purposes, we're going to create our init. And I'm just going to put here that the this is the same init as a struct except structs have implicit inits. So a struct can assume what the init was going to be, whereas a class, we actually have to manually write it ourselves. One other main difference between structs and classes is that classes have a D init. All right. And so this D init is the opposite of init. So back in the OOP object oriented programming video, we talked about destroying an object, which is de-initializing an object. So we can create one with an init and we can destroy one with a D init. And so when we destroy this object, this code will run this closure. And let's put a note here. This runs as the object is being removed from memory. And we should note here that structs do not have D init. Structs do not have D init because of the nature of structs. The nature of structs is that they are value types. So we're doing that copy and pasting thing again. And so when we change a struct, we are mutating the struct every time, right? We wrote code to like literally mutate the struct. And so anytime you change that struct, it's basically getting destroyed and recreated. Whereas for classes, anytime we change the data in here, it's the same class that is alive. And we're just changing value inside this class. So only classes have deinitializers, structs do not. But I will caveat that even though there is a dinit, it's not very, very common. So I think if you're just starting out, you probably will not even use the dinit for maybe another like 50 videos or like you'll probably build many apps without ever using a dinit. 
but you should know that they're here and they are specific to classes. All right, so now in my code, I'm gonna create a class. Let's call this my view model of type screen view model, and I'll set it equal to a screen view model. Let's call this screen one and show button will set equal to true. And now I wanna change the value of show button to false. And if you were with me in the struct video, we had to do all this like weird mutating to take the existing values and then create a new version where we just changed out this value. Because this is now a class, we can actually just access what is called the instance of this class. So again, classes are reference types that point to an object in memory. When we create this view model, it's actually getting stored in memory. And this is actually a pointer to that object in memory. And so we are not going to actually change this object. So we can actually make this a let. Instead of changing the object itself, we are going to go into the instance of this object. So we're going to point to the object in memory and then just change the value in place. So notice how this is a let. When we were using a struct, these were all vars. Because when we change the struct, we're creating a new struct. So that's actually a variable, meaning that this object was changing. When we change a class, so view model dot show button, I set it equal to false. This is actually still a constant, even though the data inside is changing, it is still a constant. So this is a fundamental difference between structs and classes is that in classes, we create an instance and then we can change values inside the instance. Now let's put a comment here. Notice that we are using a let because the object itself is not changing. The data inside the object is changing. And so at face value, classes are actually easier to work with than structs because we can just create them and then change the data inside. However, there are benefits of using structs. Structs, structs are thread safe. They are faster. They have lower memory footprint. We don't have to worry about dealing with the references to the heap. But of course, there are use cases where we need to use a class and we cannot use a struct. The last thing I'm going to point out here is that when we were using structs, we did some logic to actually move the mutation, the editing of the struct into the object itself. And we should do that for the class as well. So right now we are editing the value of show button from outside of the class. And really what we want to do is create a function in here called maybe hide button. And inside this class, we will set show button equal to false. I could also create a function here called maybe update show button and pass in a new value, which is a Boolean and then show button equals the new value. And so in my code down here, I would instead call view model dot hide button or view model dot update show button to false. And since we are now editing this from within the class, we should make this so that we can only set its value from within the class. So we make this a private set var. So we can get this value from down in our code here, but we cannot set it. So we can't do this, but we could say let value equals view model dot show bot. So we cannot set a new value from outside of it, but we can get the value from outside of it. And then anytime we want to actually edit it, it's going to be happening from inside the class itself. This is what's considered clean code and a better coding practice. All right. That is all I'm going to do for this class's video. There is more things that classes do that are different than structs, but I don't think it is worth diving into some of that stuff at this stage in the game. In the next couple of videos, we're going to take now what we've learned about structs, enums, and classes and put them to use. And we're going to start looking at some ways that we can actually manipulate some of this code in a more of a real world scenario. But the first thing we're going to look at next is taking a deeper dive into this private keyword so that we can really understand when we should use or not use private. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.